Good morning and welcome to Tiddenham Parish Online Church on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A slight break from our new routine. Um, we won't be live streaming from Tuts Hill this morning as it's the annual general meeting at Tiddenham Church at 10.30. So I said I'd record the sermon for this morning for our online congregation. And while I'm at it, I thought I might as well frame it with a bit of uh, prayer and scripture reading and worship. So let us pray. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the reading today is taken from Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 5. The next day, the rulers, elders and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. What a simple statement. What a humble statement. What a bold statement. Simpler humbler, bolder. These are the three words that the Church of England has discerned as part of their strategy planning. 
The document released last year outlined the vision for the Church of England in the 2020s to be Christ-centred, Jesus-shaped, simpler, humbler, bolder. As we host our annual general meeting today, it seemed appropriate to have a look at this national vision, remembering that we belong to a wider community of faith than just our local parish. And whilst we look back over the past year, it may help us to look forward and begin perhaps to question how this national vision for the 2020s applies to our local context. First of all, I want to share some thoughts and reflections by Stephen Cottrell, the Archbishop of York, on this vision. He says the imagery is important. It starts with two concentric circles. He says, what do you see? It could be several things. It could be the centre of a target that we're aiming at, or it could be the hub of a wheel which will turn, bringing the movement of the spirit into the life of the church. It could be a pebble dropped into the centre of a lake whose ripples flow out, bringing refreshment and disturbance in equal measure. But however you see it, and different interpretations are encouraged, what you are looking at is the heart of the vision that they believe that God is giving to the church. We're not saying anything new. How could we? The vision for what it means to be the Church of Jesus Christ doesn't change. It's not something that we make up in each generation. It's something we proclaim afresh. But there are also times in our life and the great challenge facing the world because of COVID-19 is one such time when God recalls us to a central vocation, which is to be a people who are centred on Christ. This is the heart of the vision, to be a Christ-centred church. And there needs to be a strong call to the renewal of our life in Christ. And so the first priority is to be a people of prayer, rooted in the revelation of God's love for us in Jesus Christ, the one who died for us and rose again, and who pours his spirit into our hearts for our renewal and for the renewal of the earth. And then alongside the phrase Christ-centred, you see the phrase Jesus-shaped. Jesus Christ, Mary's son, the preacher and healer from Nazareth, the one we read about in scripture, the man who shared our life on earth, lived a life like ours, taught and healed and showed us what humanity could be. To live a life shaped like Jesus is about our call to be his disciples. And the Anglican Church uses the five marks of mission to describe this life. The first, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, to teach, baptise and nurture new believers, to respond to human need by loving service, to transform unjust structures of society and pursue peace and reconciliation, and to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation, sustaining and renewing the life of the earth. From this centre, three strategic priorities begin to emerge. They form the three segments of the next ring that flows from the central vision. The first of these is that we believe that God might be calling us to be a much more a church of missionary disciples. God calls every one of us to be a missionary disciple. In the New Testament, the same 12 who are named disciples are also called apostles, those who are sent. There is no point which they graduate from one to the other. They are always those who are gathered around Jesus and follow him. And they are always those who are sent out by him. It must be the same with us. We are called to gather around Jesus in worship, prayer and fellowship. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we are sent out by Jesus to be his witnesses and ambassadors in the world. Then the next segment says that we believe God might be calling us to be a church where a mixed ecology is the norm. The Church of Jesus Christ has always been a mixed ecology. Every church was planted once. By using this phrase, we simply acknowledge what is, but also signal the fact that in the diverse smorgasbord of the different cultures and contexts which we serve in England today, we'll probably need a greater and more diverse expression of church life. Hence the proliferation of mission initiatives, church plants, fresh expressions, and new religious communities. And this year, the remarkable new communities of faith that have been established online. This calls for a flourishing of our parish ministry, but also seeing God raise up new forms of church. 
And then the third segment is that we believe God is calling us to be a younger and more diverse church, a church that serves children and young people and involves them in its leadership and ministry, a church where black lives matter, an enabling church for disabled people, and a church that reflects the great biblical vision where every tribe and tongue and people and nation are gathered together and our ministry looks like the communities it serves. Diversity of age and colour and ethnicity is never for us simply a matter of inclusion. It's a biblical imperative and it is the means whereby we will be able to, to evangelise our nation and find the very best ways forward for all voices to be heard. The final circle, neither a vision statement nor a strategic priority, restates the, the reality of what it means to be the Church of England, a network of networks. Uh, any vision and strategy is only as good as the good it does in shaping the visions and strategy of the local church. This is the Church of England in all its glorious every inch of the map covered diversity. The hope is that this vision and these three strategic priorities will creatively interact with and provoke the diocese and local churches of the Church of England to renew their life in Christ. By growing congregations of missionary disciples that are younger and more diverse, we will better serve the breadth and diversity of our nation by becoming the church of networks of the 21st century as well as its neighbourhoods. Finally, Around the outside, you'll see those three words that have emerged in the discussions and prayers, simpler, humbler, bolder, are referred to at the start. These three words are not strategic aims. They are virtues that we believe God is calling from us at this particular point in our history. And they run through the vision and shape all we do and all that we are. Simpler because we're not as big a church as we used to be, and there might be too much bureaucracy. So a look at our governance structure and other areas of our life, this simplicity must shine through. Humbler, because we're having to face our failures, and this isn't easy. We need to become a place that is safe for all. We also need to recognise that we're not the only Christian show in town. and We need to work with, our, with other denominations and, where appropriate, other faiths and with all people of goodwill. We, and also we must learn to live within our means. And bolder, because the love of Christ compels us. We have a gospel to proclaim and we live and minister in a world of much pain and confusion. The things that have been entrusted to us in Christ are the very things the world needs showing people the beauty and the purposes of Christ and building his kingdom in the world. This includes the way we steward the earth and the Church of England has made a bold intention that by 2030 uh, we should be carbon neutral. Now, what I've shared with you this morning so far are just excerpts of uh, Stephen Cotterell's reflections and thoughts. And you can find the whole document online on the Church of England website. Or actually, I think I'll probably post it on our uh, on our parish website for you to download as well. But finally, I'd like to share just a few reflections and perhaps just questions, actually, about how this um, national vision applies to our local context. To be Christ centred and Jesus shaped. To fulfil our parish vision, to live life together in the flow of God's love, requires us to be Christ-centred and Jesus-shaped. To remain in the flow of God's love, we need to be a praying community, seeking to be centred on Christ. And to do life together and to do relationship well, we need to model or shape our lives on Jesus and cultivate the fruits of his spirit. How can we improve our corporate and individual prayer life? To be a church of missionary disciples. The Flourish Initiative, which you may have heard us refer to several times over the past year in our sermons, um, is all about encouraging us to whole life discipleship. Each of us seeing our role as promoting and furthering the kingdom of God in whatever context God calls us to be in, in our work, in the home, in our neighbourhood. So in what ways does our gathered community equip and empower us to be sent out week by week. To be a church where mixed ecology is the norm. We've already begun to explore in this parish how we might provide discipleship and worship opportunities for different people groups. We have the drop-in 
style well at Sebri Space, the, the outdoor worship without walls, um, and the exploration at the moment for the potential of a well-being chaplain in the parish. These are all new expressions um, of ministry alongside our traditional parish work. How do we acknowledge and support these different expressions of church life so that they are considered as equally valid and valuable? To be younger and more diverse. Well, we have an ageing congregation on the whole and none of us are getting any younger. Recently, the PCC made a commitment to con continue our investment in youth, children's and families ministry over the next three years, building relationships, serving the community and seeking ways to journey in discipleship with the next generations. Are there other ways in which we need to be welcoming and inclusive to reflect the diversity of our context here? To serve our networks, we are one of the many diverse parishes or benefices that make up the Church of England and we have our own networks with which to engage the schools, community groups, parish council, voluntary and statutory agencies, partner organisations and the army barracks to name a few. We have a duty of care to the whole parish but we also need to raise awareness and focus perhaps more particularly on the neglected and marginalised areas. So where are the forgotten corners of our area that we need to uh, make sure uh, are part of our focus? To be simpler, humbler and bolder. Back to where we started. What does it mean for us? Again, more questions rather than answers. Um, and these are to be applied to our church community, but also to each of us as individuals. How can we live and operate more simply and thereby hopefully more sustainably? What mistakes do we need to own up to? And with whom should we humbly partner? How can we courageously share the good news of Jesus and boldly contribute to the environmental commitment of the Church of England? This vision of the Church of England for the 2020s is not something else we need to do as well as everything else we're already doing. Rather, it's a plumb line against which we can check what we are doing and hopefully help us to recognise and celebrate that we're part of something bigger rather than just this small little corner of uh, not just Gloucester Diocese, but, the in but of, or right on the edges of England. So I pray that as we enter a new a year as we report on the last year and, and turn our focus to, to what is coming, that we can learn together to be Christ-centred and Jesus-shaped and to live lives that are simpler, humbler and bolder. Amen.
and a few notices before we close. Um, the next phase of the building work at St Luke's is taking place over the next few weeks as we install a new servery at Backer Church. Um, and so the Wednesday morning or lunchtime communions will take place, still take place, in the Vicarage Garden instead under the marquee. So if you'd like to book a place for that, please contact Claire. A reminder that uh, you are still able to give online or by text and the slide will be at the end of this short act of worship. Um, and finally, uh, as many of you know, my curacy is due to end uh, at the end of July and lots of you have been asking me what next and I haven't really been able to say anything. Um, but I can now share with you that uh, last week I was interviewed and by the grace of God was appointed as a community pioneer minister for the parish of West Cheltenham. Um, the, I'm due to start in early September. Um, and I make this announcement with mixed emotions, as you can imagine. Um, you and I are really excited about the future, uh, but actually also really sad to be leaving behind our home uh, of many years, our physical home, but also our spiritual home and family. Um, but we're not far away and of course we will still keep in touch. Um, and so now if you would like to stand uh, for a final prayer and blessing. May the Father, who loved, so loved the world that he gave his only Son, grant you simplicity of faith to bring you to eternal life. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, grant you humility as you walk with him the way of his cross. And may the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, grant you boldness to witness to his life and peace. And now the blessing of Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>